Hello, hello everyone. So today it's going to be a little different in this video. I was going to do a no talking video and I decided since some of you would rather hear me explain that I was going to do a little voiceover on my recipe video. So here we go. Um, we're going to make a curry dish for my daughter. She wanted to make one but she pretty much washed her hands from it so she asked me if I would quickly make her one because she was busy working I said I would so we're gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil in your pot and we're gonna chop up an onion so we're gonna start frying some of these ingredients ahead of time so we're gonna chop up our onion and throw it into the pot and we don't want to put this on a very high heat we want to have it low to start off so we don't burn anything and once we get most of our ingredients in there, we're going to be able to quickly give it a give it a nice fry. And then we're going to fuse all those flavors together. So I will also be adding only half of a sweet potato. Now I'm making a small batch for Erica because when I did make this recipe, I was still on a water fast. So I didn't want to make too much food. Otherwise, my fridge is full of leftovers. So I did make a small batch for her and in this recipe I'm only using half of a sweet potato and believe it or not she was able to have this, um, I, I would say that you can do, uh, this would be like a serving of either two if you're eating a lot or if you want to just make small portions this would be also for four people. But. Uh, especially if you're going to have rice uh, as a base. So this could be four people or it could be two people if you want to eat a lot of it. We are going to start adding some of our beautiful Indian spices to the mixture because we want to be able to fry them all up together. And we're going to start off with a large tablespoon of curry powder now if you don't want it so strong you can put uh, less I did add some beautiful uh, black seeds now these are also called nigella seeds and it adds a nice oniony taste to the dish and of course with some beautiful crushed coriander seeds I'm going to use about a teaspoon of this and I'm going to crush it by hand because I don't want this as a powder. I want it that when you do take a bite of your dish that you do feel a little bit of these seeds under your teeth. It really adds a nice burst of flavor. So that's one teaspoon that we are crushing. And those nigella seeds are fantastic. If you haven't tried it, it's a must. They go as black seeds. I'll put a link somewhere where you can find them. Maybe check under my video in description. And as you could tell, my kitty's also hungry. You're going to hear a lot of that in the back. So we took some cardamom seeds. And again, uh, this is mostly for flavor. I only have about three, four of them. We're just going to give it a fast crush. And then we're going to dump it into our mixture. So you don't want to chew on those, but that will add a nice flavor. So if you do find it in your plate, just simply push it over to the side. A little extra olive oil. Now normally uh, curry dishes are very high in fat, but we're trying to do it. We're trying to make this, this, this dish as less fat as possible. So oil, it really depends on you, how much you want to use. You do want some oil at the bottom of the pan, so this way nothing sticks. But if it does stick, okay. once you put the milk, um, all of that flavor that's stuck to the bottom of the pan will uh, fuse back into the dish and it's going to be beautiful. Now, normally when I make a nice curry dish, I either use a tofu or I use some of my chicken meat. But I wanted to do something a little lighter. I wanted to make this dish a little lighter. So we are going to use cauliflower, which makes a nice replacement to any Indian dish. So again, remember I'm making a small portion of this. So you can triple it if you want. You can uh, double. It really is up to you. 
it's going to make a nice, nice curry dish just by adding the cauliflower. Um, I did have some of my mushrooms on hand. Uh, these are the chicken of the woods and it has a nice texture to it, almost like uh, chicken. And my daughter last minute asked if I would put some in, which I did. Otherwise, I would have just done the, cur uh, the uh, curry dish with the cauliflower. But she did want uh, to add some of that uh, chicken of the woods, which I did. And, but that's not something that is, uh, it's optional. You really don't have to put that in. There's so many different ways you can make curry dishes and so, so delicious. I did add some extra chicken of the wood mushrooms, but like I said, that is optional. It's really not needed. This dish is delicious just with the uh, cauliflower added to it. So we're going to add a little bit of turmeric. Uh, turmeric makes the dish nice and yellow. Uh, I only added about a half a teaspoon. Uh, plus turmeric has got loads of benefits. Now don't get worried if you see stuff sticking to the bottom of your pot. Once you add your liquid that will all go into the sauce and make a beautiful, beautiful flavors. So there's the rest of my cauliflower. Remember this dish was only for Erica and she had plenty left over. But if you do want uh, to make a larger batch, just double the recipe. And the fun part about this dish is what you put in it is what you get. Uh, if you want to add other ingredients to your, uh, to your dish, by all means, go ahead. I would say I use about two cups of cauli, uh, cauliflower flowers and that was perfect uh, for the recipe that I was making but again like I said double triple it really is up to you So we're going to add a little bit of salt and again it really is up to you how much salt you want to put and there goes my almond milk uh, instead of using heavy creams to this dish I decided to use uh, milk where it will give you less calories also and because our milk is uh, less thick we will be adding something to stick in our sauce. As you can see, this dish is very, very simple. We're going to start putting up our temperature so it can start uh, basically simmering. You don't really want this to go into a big boil. I'm adding a little extra curry. But again, that's really up to you how much curry you want to put into this dish. And again, I am using uh, a little bit of butter, but that's optional. You really don't have to. This just gives it that extra buttery taste that most Indian dishes have. And now this is really up to you. Uh, we love our Indian food really spicy. So I am adding some of my homemade uh, hot chili under oil. And I'm using one heaping teaspoon of, of, the, uh, of the oil and the chili. And I'm using about one heaping teaspoon of it. We like it spicy. I will be adding even more later on. 
And this dish really doesn't take long to cook. I would say about 20 minutes cooking time and your curry dish is made. I'm adding some beautiful silk cashews for that added bite under your teeth. Plus they're healthy for you. But this dish really does not take long to cook. It's one of these dishes that just warms up the belly when you're eating it. So there is another spice that I love using and that's gram masala. So I did put a nice tablespoon of it and I will be adding at least one to two cloves of crushed garlic. Because I'm using milk and not a uh, very thick cream or coconut milk, I will be adding just a little bit of cornstarch to thicken the broth of my uh, curry dish. So at this point I'm adding about a tablespoon of, um, I use tapioca starch and if you want it even thicker you can add more but I'm only using one tablespoon because we don't want it super thick because it will thicken up the day after. As you see I'm also adding some extra hot pepper and this is more for visual so I'm not using a lot just so you get to see some of that red little tiny bits in your dish. At this point you could just bring up the heat just a little bit but you don't want it to go into a boil. You want to be able to just simmer it and then we're going to cover it and let it cook for at least 20 minutes. And with a little bit of magic, the dish is almost done. But do check to see the tenderness of your vegetables. You don't want this to be uh, tootsin. You want it to be nice and tender to the bite. At this point, we can add our slurry and thicken up our broth. Now, if you want this to be a thicker sauce and you're not worried about calories, what you could do is use a whole can of coconut milk to your dish rather than using just plain milk. So at this point, we're going to bring up the heat so we can start reducing the liquid. We're going to give it a little taste, see if there's any salt missing or whatever else you would like to add. Remember, you are the cook in your house. Taste your food and see what you like to put in it. A little bit of fresh cilantro, but we're not going to use all of it. We're going to save a little for when we garnish our dish. Very good, there. I'm glad I just had it. Keep cooking until you're satisfied with the thickness of your broth. Remember, you could always use coconut milk. I'm adding a little extra starch just to get it to the right texture that we like. And now finally, and I always wait till the very end, this is when I will start adding my green peas. I prefer putting them at the end because they stay nice and green rather than going to a very dull, ugly green. They stay bright and vibrant. And they have a nice little bite under your teeth. These do not have to be cooked down because the heat of the curry will cook the peas. Time to plate our dish. A little bit of rice. Our curry. Mmm, I wish you can smell this guys. 
It smells divine. Our flatbread that we made earlier. And some beautiful cilantro on top. Some yummy black salt. And that's it guys. I hope you like this recipe. And if you do, share with your friends. And I'll see you soon. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.